The Bible reads, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that is in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I feel like this is really like Brother Luke's sermon, Brother Jake's, mine, that really tie in together. It's awesome how that works out. Um, the purpose of this sermon is to help us understand how we are perceived. Um, how you're known is the, the title of the sermon. And it's to really understand how to clean the inside of the cup and so that the outside can be clean as well, the heart uh, being clean. When we do that, we, as Matthew chapter 5 says, men will glorify our Father, which is in heaven, when they see us, if we live according to his word. So, how you're known. Here's a warning, a disclaimer. Some people can be known for things that they are not. Don't be a liar, okay? Just because you got shrinks and psychologists or reprobates who pretend to be something that they're not doesn't mean that there aren't commandments in the Bible that we should follow, right? Both inside and outward to the world, okay? Disclaimer, don't be a liar. Matthew 23, verse uh, 23 through 26, Jesus is addressing the Pharisees and he says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have to have done and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides which strain in a gnat and swallow a camel, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So, my point for reading that is, if you're a liar, you're giving off something that you're not, you'll get berated, not blessed. Okay? So, don't be a liar. Alright, so, how we're known. There's three things I want to cover. We are known by our words. We are known by our works. We're also no known by our wardrobe. So God places greater importance in, in the order that I'm going to give it. He gives greater importance to words and works and then your wardrobe. Okay, Then how you look, how you appear. Uh, unfortunately, men normally flip that. Okay, let's just take politicians, for instance. All right, if you're if you speak well, if you dress nice, right? If you've got the right letter beside your name, it could matter less what you actually do, what you actually vote, what you actually believe, right? Men look for that that outward appearance. That's the most important thing. And then, okay, we'll kind of look at their record, and then, wait, they they believe in like the following the stars and horoscopes and oh that doesn't matter you know yeah. let's just he was nice and he had an R by his name it'll be okay right that's what men do so God does not look at it that way we're gonna we're gonna cover most important to least important first words uh, words identify who you are okay uh, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 12 I'm going to turn to John 8, John 8, 19. <clears throat> John, in John 8, Jesus is having uh, a discussion with the Pharisees. Uh, then they said unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. Now, who is Jesus? According to John 1, John 1, 1, he's specifically known as the Word. Right? He is the Word of God. Okay? 
they didn't know God's word. They did not know the Father either, right? They, they didn't know either one. They, if they had known God's word, then they would have known God, right? And Jesus constantly put that in their face. Hey, look, you transgress the, the scriptures, you transgress God's word because of your tradition, right? They knew their tradition pretty well, but they didn't know God's word, right? So, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to... All right, quiz time, Brother Jake. Here we go, ready? I'm going to give you a few words, and I want you to tell me who I'm talking about, all right? And, and we're, we're staying inside the room here, okay? So not way off anywhere, all right? Inside this room. Oregano oil. Who are we talking about? You don't know who we're talking about? Oh, you looked at him. <laughs> He's got it in his pocket, too. <laughs> right? We're talking about Brother Fannin. We're talking about Pastor Fannin. <laughs> all right? Uh, Brother Dale. Anything that has to do about Russia or speaking Russian? Brother Mike. Brother Mike. Okay, right? Now, not to say that this is all that anyone talks about, but they're identifiable, yeah, yeah. right? Um, Pastor Fannin. Hot sauce. Oh, all right. <laughs> it was going to be him, but it wasn't hot sauce. <laughs> Biblical prophecy, especially who Babylon is. Okay? That was just, you know, things that, those are identifiable. Right? right? One, of the, one of the kids in, in here, I won't say who for, you know, avoid embarrassment, but they drew a picture of me. And they drew a picture of my, with my facial hair on the picture, and it didn't connect. It's like, okay, right? Somebody knows me a little bit. <laughs> I walk around like this. <laughs> but, you know, some things that are identifiable. That wasn't necessarily words. It was more my appearance. But <laughs> there are certain things, words-wise, that we know who is who based on what they talk about, what they do, right? Um, in Matthew 12, uh, verse 34 and 35, Words also identify what you believe, good or bad, right? We were talking, uh, Brother Luke was talking about at in soul winning, right? They're guilty until proven innocent, until the words come out of their mouth, and then either they're guilty or they're innocent, right? It's there, we see once the words come out, we know what's in their heart, that's right. and that's what words do. Words tell us what is believed, what's down in your heart. Matthew uh, 12, 34 and 35 says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. And that's specifically talking about the words that come out of his mouth, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, right? We know what they believe based on their words. We know who they are based on their words. So, real quick, some advice for words. Our words should be understandable, okay? Um, I watched a video recently, and it was, it was discussing uh, all these different phrases and, and words that the Calvinists use, right? Antilegomena, homilegomena, it sounds like a Pentecostal movement. I mean, just like, <clears throat> they're not easy to be understood. And then well, we believe in this, this confession and that confession, but not all of them. You know, it's confusion. It's meant to be confusing. Okay? Our words should be understandable. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 7 through 9 says, And even things without life, giving sound, whether pipe or harp, Except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. Right? This is specifically talking about 
um, you know, speaking in different languages, um, you know, and having one language that you speak in the church so that everybody can understand, right? right? <clears throat> Pretty sure antilegomena, or whatever it is, is probably Greek or Latin or something else besides English, right? Speak words easy to be understood. Are we talking about end times prophecy versus eschatology? Yeah. I don't even know if I got that right. <laughs> but, you know, speak easy, words easy to be understood. Second, uh, let your words be few. Proverbs uh, 17, verse 27 says, He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding, of, a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. So notice, he spares his words. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Right? You don't necessarily have to be smart for people to think you're smart. You just <laughs> shut your mouth, right? And and even, even if you know a lot of knowledge, that verse 27 says, he that hath knowledge spareth his words. He talks about what he knows, right? And you'll you'll notice like there might be somebody who talks about make talk about cars all the time, right? And then somebody else who's maybe been working on cars for 30 years. That other guy might actually like quiet down. Why? Because he doesn't actually have what he's boasting about, right? He's he's a fool who's just spouting off and if somebody's there to correct him, you know, people get quiet when somebody else with more experience comes around. So just let your words be few. Uh, the next thing we're known by, we're known by our words. We're also known by our works. If you would turn over to 1 Timothy 5 and verse 24. <clears throat> and this will be the springboard for this. I'm going to go some other uh, verses. But 1 Timothy 5, 24 says, Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. Likewise, also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. All right, your works talk a lot, okay? Especially to men, right? I, you've heard the phrase, your walk talks louder than your talk talks, right? That is true. When you do stuff, right, it, it, ha it holds more weight with, especially with men, than what you say. If you say and don't do, you might as well have not said it, right? <clears throat> and, and this verse, uh, likewise also the good works of some are manifest beforehand. This, this reminds me of uh, the centurion in Luke 7. Luke 7 verse 2 says, And a certain centurion servant who is dear unto him was sick and ready to die, and when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. What happens next? These Jews that go to Jesus says, And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he, the centurion, was worthy for whom he should do this, for he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. This guy's good works went before him. He didn't have to say, you know, see the synagogue I, I built? Everyone around was like, hey, this guy loves us, right? This guy takes care of us. He built us a synagogue. He didn't have to do that. I'm sure he didn't have to do that. He, who knows? He might have even gotten in trouble uh, with, with the hierarchy going, why are you building stuff for the Jews? You know, that's not your job. Your job is to collect taxes, <laughs> probably, right? Keep the peace. Um, but this guy had good works, and it went before him. And we also see further down the road that not only did he have good works, but he had uh, faith that made Jesus marvel, right? He was, he, he had it, he had it all together. He had the faith, he had the works. Um, you know, he, he was quite possibly perfect in, in that respect. <clears throat> so, we are known by our good works. Um, Proverbs 20, verse 11 says, Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. Right? Children, even children, right? You don't have to be an adult 
right? To be known by your works, even children that are known whether they do right or whether they do wrong, whether they're obedient or they're a handful, right? 1 Corinthians 8, 3 says, but if any man love God, the same is known of him. And remember, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, yep. right? The works were going forward from these people. The, the, if any man love God, the same is known of him, right? You don't have to tell people, I love God. People, look, are you religious? Do you go to church? You know, they see things if you're following God's commandments. <clears throat> not only that, but not only are you known by your works, but um, your works can also make others known. Proverbs 31, we find in verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. And you read 12 verses of all the things that she's doing. She's getting up early. She's making food. She's sewing clothes, making material to sew clothes, right? She's doing a lot of really hard work. And in verse 23, it says, her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. It's just the same that we read in, in Matthew chapter five, that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven, right? This <clears throat> virtuous woman with all her good work, it brought honor to her husband. With the work that we do, we should be bringing honor to God. If we're working for a, a boss, right? Say, say you get, uh, say I get someone from Comcast to come to my place, right? And they're terrible. They're a terrible technician. I'm gonna think Comcast is terrible. Okay, they're hit or miss. All right, <laughs> but that worker is a reflection on the entire company, right? It's not just me going, ah, that worker, he was, he was garbage, right? It might make me not glorify the entire company because of that one person that was representing him. <clears throat> so with that said, not only are we known for our good works, but we're known for our bad works. Read in, in uh, 2 Timothy that... Uh, <clears throat> the good works going before man, right? Those that are otherwise not good works cannot be hid, right? It's like, hey, if you've got this big glaring problem, it can't be hid. Proverbs 10, 9, talking about bad works. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. You're not going to hide, right? <clears throat> You, you might be able to hide for a while, but it says that it shall be known. You shall, if you pervert your ways, you're gonna be found out, okay? So, that was works. We're known by our words, we're known by our works. We're also known by our wardrobe. If you would go over to Judges chapter eight. <clears throat> Judges chapter eight, and I'm gonna give you just a backstory on this. Gideon is fighting a battle against the Midianites, okay? And <clears throat> he has his 300 men God chose for him, and they go to battle, and the Midianites turn and flee and start fighting each other on the way out, and they get more uh, of Israel to come down to fight them, and, and they have a great victory, right? So, we get to Judges 8, verse 24. And Gideon said unto them, because they wanted to make him a king, right? And he was like, no, I don't want to be your king. Serve God. But here was his request. I would desire a request of you, that ye would give me every man the earrings of his prey. Now, how did he know everyone had earrings? It says so in the next part. For they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. He knew that these guys were Ishmaelites because they had golden earrings. It was an outward marker, right? We, certain nations have certain customs. We see someone, uh, a lady walking around with 
you know, that much of her face showing. I'm like, okay, either she's just new here or she's part of a certain religion, yep. right? We already know based on their wardrobe what they look like, at least who they are in, in a general context, right? You see, obviously, don't judge a book by the cover, right? But many times, and guess what? You look a certain way, you are a certain way. <clears throat> next uh, is Proverbs 7. Hey, the next thing that the Bible says you can know, you can know loose women by their clothing. Um, and in this passage, it almost looks like uh, uh, Solomon can know a simple man just by looking down. Well, Proverbs chapter 7, verse 6, it says, For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones... I discerned among the youths a man void of understanding. Right? He's just looking down and he's like, that guy looks like he's void of understanding. Now, I don't know if it was appearance or based on what he was doing next, but verse 8 says, Passing through the street near her corner, he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. And it goes on, right? This, he makes a, a, an identification of this woman based on her attire, right? Maybe she was hiding her face like we see with, uh, I believe it was Judah and, and his daughter-in-law. She hid her face. He assumed that she was a harlot, okay? And <clears throat> we also see what she's doing. She's being loud and stubborn, right? But there is an element of her attire giving away who she was, okay? <clears throat> Bible also says that God's people are known by what or how they dress. In 1 Timothy, there's at least a commandment. 1 Timothy 2, 9, verse 10 says, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So we literally see right here, we see all three commandments. We see appear a certain way. We also see if you're professing godliness, the words coming out of your mouth are saying, I'm a Christian, that you should have certain attire, certain profession, and have good works. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So we see that, hey, you are known by your words, you're known by your works, you are known by your wardrobe, right? Like I said in the beginning, none of those things, <clears throat> just correcting your words, correcting your works, correcting your wardrobe, how, you know, that's not the root of the part problem. That's not the heart of the problem. The heart of the problem is your heart, right? So what's the solution? Turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. <clears throat> the solution, we've got three things. Follow godly authority. Number one. Proverbs 4, 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. He says, hey, the heart of the matter is the heart, right? Follow, this father is saying, son, follow the words that I've given you. Follow the instruction I've given you, right? And that, that could apply to um, Ephesians chapter 3, the, all those offices, right, of the church, all those people for, that were given for the perfecting of the saints, right. right? If we follow the godly authority within the authority that God has set up, not as rulers or kings or anything like that, right? It's not an absolute, hey, if I say, go, you know, buy me a car, that you have to go do that to be within God's will, right? It's following God's authority as laid out in the Bible <clears throat> through the men that God is using who are also following God's will. 
So, follow godly authority. Next, fellowship with godly friends. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 through 25. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. Right? We can't sharpen iron with iron. What do you, when you're sharpen iron with iron, they got to come together. Yeah. Right? They can't be like, all right, you stay over in your, you know, part of the shed, and I'll stay on my part of the shed, right? And well, the iron's going to sharpen itself if they don't meet up and sharpen each other, right? You got to get together to be able to sharpen. We have to have fellowship with other godly believers to sharpen each other, right? <clears throat> Next, and finally, we need to furnish ourselves with God's Word. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The man of God may be perfect, truly furnished, unto all good works. Hey, the heart of the issue is the heart, right? We're known by our words, we're known by our works, and we're known by our wardrobe. But the way to fix those is through God's Word, right? It's through fellowshipping with those who are reading God's Word. It's through following those who are following God's Word. Amen. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for uh, just a, a good men's preaching night. I just ask you to please bless your word and, and help us all to uh, be able to uh, learn from each other, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.